be seated. Can you hear me now? When I was invited to do this, I um, was given the opportunity to use the, the uh, liturgy uh, that is published. And I worked on that, and then I hope it was, I was inspired by the Lord to deviate from that, and I decided that I would like to talk about faith. And in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 13. Of course, that chapter 13 of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, is about love. Wonderful chapter. But the 13th verse, the last one, the Apostle Paul, I believe, wrote this. He says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Maybe someday I'll be blessed to talk about love. But right now, I want to talk faith because faith is the beginning of our understanding and our trust in the Lord. And not too long ago, I was... I was in prayer with the Lord and I asked him to give me more faith and strengthen my faith. And the idea, I guess the Spirit put in my mind, was, Jack, it's your faith. You do it. You strengthen it. You have the power to have faith or not. So, just do it and I'm doing it. And I really do like the way it's working out. And what, what is faith? That has, uh, well, a lot of people have worked on that, but I've got it right here in the, in the Bible, Hebrews, and the introduction to this in my Bible says, they don't know who wrote uh, this uh, letter to the Hebrews. I would have suspect, suspected it would be Paul, but it doesn't say that. Chapter 11, by faith. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And the Bible, of course, is full of stories of faith back to Abraham, to, to the woman who wanted to touch the hem of Jesus' robe to cure her infirmity. She touched it. She was cured by faith. So it's all over the Bible, our, our admonition to be faithful, to learn faith. We're called people of faith by the mainstream media, I believe, even. Because we are believers and we have faith in our God. So I am very, very impressed with faith and I want, to, I want to get more of it and share what I think with you. So I guess I have to tell you where I have used faith that saved me from disasters. I've been near death several times and I think probably when you get to <laughs> as old and decrepit as I am you you get a, you know you're getting closer and uh, of course I I spent my working career as a pilot and it wasn't always as captain of a 747 I can tell you for sure in the hard days I the lowest of flying I've done was uh, most dangerous uh, aerial application of what? Poison. I poisoned bugs 
with the airplane, and it it I, my first day on the job. It, it takes too long. It, it was too dramatic for me to go into that now. But it was one disaster after another, and I guess the worst one. Well, I told I told the worst one in the early service. I'll tell the last one. As I was leaving the job site, my first day, the, the uh, sun went down, always does every evening, and it got dark. And I was in the airplane going from Del Rio back to Brownwood, and there's no electricity in that airplane except for the spark plugs, no lights, no instruments. I had gotten up early that morning to go interview for this job and I didn't bring a flashlight with me in the morning so there I was at night I couldn't see my watch every minute was three hours long at least I couldn't see the fuel gauge I couldn't see a map that I had uh, I couldn't well totally blind and I'm scared to death because of no lights on the airplane that would identify me to another airplane so that I wouldn't get run over. This was a pretty slow airplane. And I had to turn to my faith to not give up. And sure enough, I didn't give up, and I found the airport, and I landed. The uh, engine exhaust was up here at my 1 o'clock position, and that was a good thing because I could use the mixture control to get the flame that came out of the exhaust pipe down as to a nice blue short thing just barely coming out of the exhaust pipe. And I knew that that was a good air to fuel mixture ratio. So when I got near the airport, well, of course, not, knowing, not being able to see my fuel gauge, I didn't know how long the airplane was going to keep running. But I got up close to the airport at Brownwood, and I thought, well, I'll enrich in the mixture and get the white flame out, out the stack, so if there are any other airplanes, uh, they'll see me and stay away. So I did that. I flew a tight pattern, and as I landed, uh, I turned off the first taxiway. Of course, the airport was lighting. And the minute... I mean, the second that I cleared the runway, I heard behind me, I'll make a part for the sound effects, but I went, <laughs> and I turned around and looked, and a Trans-Texas DC-3 had just touched down where I was two seconds before. Uh, I could go on, and I was afraid that if the, if the pilots on that airplane had seen me, they would come over and kill me. For, for endangering them and their passengers. So I, uh, I stayed, uh, <laughs> I tried to stay invisible for a while until they came and went because my boss, I'm sure he was wringing his hands about me coming in there in the middle of the night or way late at night in the dark with his only airplane. But of course I was in constant conversation with the Lord all the way home from Del Rio to Brownwood. And my faith carried me through. I could go over and over many, many stories about faith and what it has done for me from, by my Lord. And I'll suffice it to say in a, in a short version, every time I made a mistake, a big mistake, a little mistake, the Lord fixed it and made a better deal for me after the fixing of my errors. So I thank the Lord for faith. I thank the Lord for his, his blessings. And as Horace Gump might have said, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs>